Good morning, folks. Today, the battle between solar shutdown and planetary geometry is hitting a high point. Also have some info for you on that California carbon monoxide release. Let's come first to spaceweathernews.com to find a very calm Earth-facing disk of the Sun. This is somewhat unexpected given that the primary solar conjunction is at hand. We did get that CME two days ago, but thus far the solar flaring has remained in the dumps with only some new sunspot growth to eye up there. Interestingly, these are opposing polarity sunspots with different colors leading the new ones versus the established grouping. The only ejection over the last day worth noting is the filament cresting out of view. As soon as he escaped the purview of the Earth-facing quiet, he released this morning. The solar wind is calm and expected to remain calm until the stream from that departing coronal hole sweeps past our planet. Today you can really see how the trans-equatorial coronal hole behind it is really just on its heels. Polarity is already shifting. We had another rare location quake up in the Arctic Circle. And I want to quickly share this story as it is related to our fly-on-the-wall discussions from late last year. Turns out there is a worker bee criticality under which the population will falter. Good article. Let's go back to quake fears. So this is the carbon monoxide detection overlay at the Earth Wind map. On February 25th, there appeared to be a massive, unprecedented release of carbon monoxide from the San Andreas Fault up through Cascadia. This is relevant because it is poisonous and such levels actually pose a risk to your health, but also because back in 2001 a massive carbon monoxide release occurred at the epicenter of a large quake a few days before it shook. Mostly we're talking about ions released from the ground or even CO2, but this right here is the only look at carbon monoxide in this way. So what's the catch? We have no idea how often this actually happens over geological timescales or if the 2001 event was merely an anomaly or if the readings over the California coastline are even real. I have no reason to doubt them at this time, but hey, those were pretty ridiculous. Eyes on all the possibilities. Just a quick note on that area. First, there's a huge swath of missing data on the latest OLR update, but we do see a strong gradient at Mexico and one heading for Oregon there. Sumatra and Argentina tie for second place on this chart. Folks, we have two deeper looks coming in the following days. First, we need to critically review the helical model of our solar system by DJ Sadhu and used repeatedly by folks like Nassim. And we also need to get you your planetary geometry for the month of March. Sun, Earth, Jupiter is only eight days away, and it's during a solar eclipse. Not sure that's ever happened in any of our lifetimes. We've got pressure and radar forecast in our top viewer locations, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in the desert, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.